Hello and welcome to the big long hard tutorial on stuff. My name is Hayden in plain sight and you're watching a technical fiasco in which I struggle with computer stuff while you struggle to learn something from my Eastern European accent. In this video we will configure SSH. If you have been watching the episodes back to back, I suggest you pause for a minute and reboot the virtual machine. You can do that by entering reboot. After the system comes back on, you should log in with your username and then use the su command to gain root privileges. Once you are back at the red prompt of danger, enter yes. Go to network services. This is the menu that allows us to configure things like SSH, Apache, FTP, Samba. As you can see, none of these are available for configuring at this point. This is because YAST has a modular structure. Every configuration task that YAST can accomplish is a separate program that handles the task. Go to the software section. Press tab and go to software management and press enter. Enter yast as a search phrase and press enter. We want to install yast2 online update configuration, yast2 online update frontend and scrolling down we can find the yast2 ssh daemon. As you should remember, we mark the packages we want with the spacebar and then we press out and A to accept our selection. Now if you look through the menus in yast, you will see that nothing has changed. With yast, press up one time to go back to the last command in the history and press enter. And this was a triumph. As you can see now the software section has two new configuration options and the network services has SSHD configuration. Let's set up SSHD. You can use the tab to cycle through the options but you should have figured out by now that you can call anything by pressing the out key and the yellow letter in the name of the option you want. So startup would be out and s. Go to startup without an S, set the service start to now and when booting with out and B. Go to general, which would be out and G. Edit the default port, so we press out and E for edit. And we are going to set the port to 11022, okay? We do that so that a scripted attack looking for systems with SSH can't sniff us out by seeing the default SSH port 22. Go to Logging, Settings, and disable Permit Root Logging by Out and T. Go to Protocol and Ciphers. In the supported SSH protocol versions, we want only version 2, so Out and N and out and O for OK. Going to quit yast. Before we do anything else we need to confirm that the SSH daemon is running. We did that by using the ps command. Enter ps aux we pipe it to less and we look through the list. On the second screen we can see all sorts of stuff we're using, commands we have entered, we can see ps aux and less and we can see user has been sshd. Press Q to exit less. Just because the service is running doesn't mean it is usable. We need to allow incoming ssh connection to pass through the firewall of our system. We can configure the firewall using yast. We go to security and users, go to firewall, press enter. Now we go to allowed services, press enter. Service to allow. Now if we press out and S, we get a menu of services 
we have on our system that we can allow. Selecting the secure shell server option from here would allow TCP connections on port 22. Since we are not using the default port 22 for SSH, we changed it to uh, what was it? 11,022. Selecting secure shell here just won't work. Instead, we want to go to advanced, which would be out and D. On the TCP ports line, we enter 11022, out and O for OK, out and N for next, and we can see open services, ports, and protocols. TCP ports 11022. Press out and F to finish. Now we know the service is running. We know it is on port 11022. Now we need to find the host address. To do that, we enter if config. This is our Ethernet adapter. Its inet address or IP address is 10.0.2.15. If you know anything about networking, you can presume that we're not going to have connectivity between the two systems. That is because the guest system, aka the virtual machine, is in a NAT behind the host system. So to SSH the guest, we are going to use the host address. First, let's configure NAT. Do that by going to Device, Network Adapters, and we click on Port Forwarding. Click on the icon to add a new port forwarding rule. We're going to call the rule SSH. SSH uses TCP. We don't need to enter a host and guest IP addresses. The host port will be 11022 and the guest port will be the same thing. We press OK. OK again. To help the people using Windows, we are going to use the PuTTY SSH client. If curious, the Linux crowd can get it via their package slash software managers. Windows users go to chiarc.greenend.org.uk Click on PuTTY, click on download, and from the binaries we're going to select a Windows installer for everything except PuTTYTEL. Once you have it installed and running, in the session category, we're going to enter the settings for the connection. So, host name or IP address would be, let's try localhost. We set the port to what we set our SSH server to work through. We select connection type SSH and we're going to save this session to avoid entering it every time we want to make a connection. We just write open SUS save open accept login as your username. We exit and we're done. Linux users can make an SSH connection by writing SSH their username at localhost minus p the port number we write yes it's asking for the password we write our password and we are in now write yes and not found sue I see yes and we have yes. Out and Q to quit. Exit. And log out. And exit again to close the terminal. If you like this video, why not subscribe, rate, and share? If you don't like this video, or you just have a suggestion, write me a comment.